Hello and greetings from Iceland. Today I will be analyzing some of the footage that was shot from the thermal drone four days before the eruption came up, and I will also be talking about new statements from scientists since they seem to expect a new eruption, not far away from the current eruption, and I will also be talking about my channel on general terms, but starting with the thermal drone shots or what I found four days prior to the eruption. We are by the mountain Kaelir, and under this area we have the magma dike that's been feeding the eruption and kept on widening after it started. And uh, while flying up there to the volcano, I didn't detect anything on the way there, and the fissure opened up around here, with the drone located just around here. This is just about where the fissure is. It stretched uh, all the way into this red spot there, but the ground surface there was darker, it was a sunny day, so I had some problems uh, interpreting those uh, readings. And the best way to do it is to point the camera straight down, but in this case the drone didn't have the range for it, nor the battery power, after a long flight. So it was a bit frustrating, not to be able to get closer, and the road from the south, the road that the hikers are using now, it was also closed, and I was not about to go walking over a land that was about to split open back then. And uh, I'm still dealing with the limitations since uh, I just found this rather interesting interview with a volcanologist in which he claims that a new fissure could open to the east of the mountain Kaelir, somewhere around here, and this is not within the official safety limits as they are defined now on the hazard map for tourists. So it looks to me as government agencies are not communicating properly or watching the news like me. So it is a bit odd that this area between Trotladink, Volcano and Kaelir is still not on a no-go zone. The line is now just beside Kaelir and as far as I could understand from this volcanologist, the danger zone should extend one or two kilometers to the east from the mountain. And this same volcanologist mentions an increase in ground temperature, like my drone did actually detect after the eruption came up, or between Kaelir and uh, Little Hutur, where the eruption is. So I have this uh, big problem now. I want to go back and do another flyover. It's actually no problem for me to drive those uh, thousand kilometers back and forth from North Iceland, but the last 15 kilometers from the Reykjanes Highway the airport road, and to the car park by Kaelir, where I would need to put my drone to work. That is a hard bit. So I got a bit frustrated and sent some emails and uh, waiting for answers. And I have to admit, I wasn't fully satisfied with the first uh, results for my drone. So I look at this as a second chance, perhaps to detect a magma intrusion before an actual eruption comes up. But then, Mother Earth might just be teasing us once again. And it could be just a waste of time and money to drive 1000 kilometers back and forth. But uh, I still want to do it. And uh, let's talk about some practical volcano tourist information now. First I want to say that it's been taking a long time to put out the wildfires around the volcano. And it's obvious to me that the, this work hasn't been done uh, with full force since the beginning. However, it is only fair to say that it's been a problem to get the water up there. They had just made a new road so the water can be trucked up there, or so they thought, until two of the fire trucks got stuck today. So this effort to extinguish these fires once and for all is not going as planned right now. And there are some experiments going on there with power cables. They will be buried into the ground where the lava will flow over them to study how they will handle the heat at the different depths. A similar study was actually done in 2021, but the lava never came. It never flowed over the test site. So they are doing this very close by the lava field now. And they are also going to study how traditional energy pylons will handle the heat. So we are about to see some new structures up there. And the results from those tests will be used to secure the power lines along the Reykjanes Peninsula. And most importantly to help them to design a new power line that has been planned there for a long time. And then we have some new tourist uh, limitations. The volcano trail is only open to 6 o'clock in the afternoon now, like some second-class barbecue joint that doesn't understand business. 
but uh, authorities say that it is due to lack of staff and you have to realize that uh, the area is for the most part uh, looked after by volunteers from the search and rescue teams. This was getting uh, way too much for the local rescue team, so there are rescue teams now from all over Iceland helping out. But it is summer, everyone needs their vacation, this is eruption number three, and rescue workers are often spending their time running after idiots. So it's a bit like uh, working as a babysitter, with uh, extremely big and boring kids and doing it for free. And I was reading this morning that uh, the rescue teams want to get rid of the traffic control at the car parks. And those car parks are run by the Landowner Association. There are many landowners there. And it's just a camera and mobile application system that does most of the work cashing in. But with the traffic, like it has been, with all sorts of drivers, Many rescue workers have been stuck in traffic control throughout the day, but the rescue teams, they don't get any of the income. And that is, of course, uh, not working. And uh, before we throw the landowners into the volcano, it's good to know that they made this possible, that we could park there. They had to invest in infrastructure for that. And I am pretty sure that this issue will be resolved among the locals, but uh, this is just a good sample of uh, what's going on in the background. And uh, there are other problems that needs to be solved. Like, I don't think it's a permanent solution to expect uh, volunteers to be there every day of the week. These people joined the search and rescue teams to uh, rescue sailors from sinking ships. But in fact, the most challenging task is uh, babysitting uh, TikTok idiots. So I'm not sure if this is encouraging when it comes to uh, get new people to join those important uh, rescue teams that we Icelanders actually respect very much. And uh, I'm happy to be able to say that the local rescue team in Grindavík has agreed to be interviewed on my channel in one of my upcoming projects. So let's talk a bit about uh, my channel and the equipment I've been getting since uh, to do interviews is a new service on my channel. And it is no secret that I want to speak to some of our experts as well. And I've already got myself a microphone for the job. And I will also be upgrading my studio microphone soon and spend some time to fix some sound issues permanently. Or to make my workflow easier and faster. And my new 360 camera is already here. The first images from this uh, new gadget will be online soon. But I have some accessories in the mail that I will need for some of the tricks I plan to do with it. And this uh, 360 camera will also be very important for other tasks than my channel, since I am formally opening up a web page in Iceland soon, where I will be offering services like 3D modeling with a drone and uh, lots of other goodies that I will explain later. And my goal is simple, I need to justify certain YouTube income limitations with uh, Icelandic income sources from around the country, sources that will take care of my travel expenses and allow me to control my own time and pick up footage for the channel while I'm on the road. Or to make this even simpler, make sure that uh, I can keep my channel alive and uh, moving around the country and uh, hopefully make a decent living from this concept. And I actually think that it's going to work out. But while it wasn't, this would never have been possible without the support that I've been getting from my viewers. So I'm keeping on with the good news. My viewers sponsored a super zoom camera to my channel recently, but the volcano took uh, all my attention for three weeks, so I had uh, no time to think about it for a while. But uh, I sat down last weekend, made the order, and it will be here, hopefully before next weekend. And this camera has a big task. Way bigger task than the 360 camera. I might not be using it all the time, but when I will need it, we will all love it. So I got some extras with it, like a dummy battery that I can connect to a power bank and keep it powered up when I'm up on the highlands or far away from the grid and even a car. And uh, I'm also working on live stream solutions for it. And the super zoom camera is just what it is. It has this extreme range that some users are using to look at the moon, the stars or the planets. And uh, I will of course do that 
from Iceland where the skies can be extremely clear, but as for volcanology, I can use it for extremely deep zoom into lava, like this was shot with a 500mm lens, but the new camera is 3000mm. So when it comes to the current eruption, I'm talking about to capture some of the extreme details through photos and videos, but what got me going now to go after this thing was, of course, uh, the volcano Katla. That was rambling the other day and still is. And what I will be dealing with there is uh, quite different than this eruption. The closed uh, security zone around the ongoing eruption is uh, around few hundred meters, but it might be 50 kilometers when it comes to Katla. And this goes also for the volcano Aska on the highlands, which is also getting ready for an eruption that uh, could turn out to be extremely nasty. And the Nikon P1000 that I'm getting, it's not the best camera in the world as such, but it will be when it comes to the zoom capabilities or where there will be no close-up webcams or no webcams at all. I'm talking about uh, events where we can expect limited air traffic for days or weeks and areas that are out of range for drones. And uh, events like uh, Katla eruption or Aska eruption are simply of such scale that my generation will most likely see that uh, only once and uh, not want to see it again. So to document it will be extremely hard task. It's nothing like the eruption we see now, where we can see hundreds of uh, close-up clips every day online in very good quality, and not even the press could get uh, near those huge uh, volcanoes at full blast. But that is when we get the most important shots. And with the best zoom camera out there today, I can only say congratulations to us all and uh, many thanks to you who understood what I was thinking when I laid out this plan. But not all my projects look so serious. I have other projects planned with less or no importance at all, more for the fun. Like I need to figure out a solution how to protect the 360 camera before I let it sink into some of the cracks on the plate boundaries. So you can have the luxury to uh, look around deep down in the plate boundaries with a 360 format that allows you to turn the camera in any direction. And as for me personally, there are some technical challenges that uh, await me. And even though people say that you can find uh, just anything on the internet, it's hard to find instructions like... Uh, how to find a magma dike with a thermal camera from a drone, or uh, how to make a 360 LED light system on a wire so you can explore a deep fissure in the plate boundaries between the North American and the Eurasian plate and uh, bring the camera back without a scratch on the lens. Or uh, is Jimmy Hoffa down there? So life is full of mysteries and questions. If not, it would be no fun. And now when I'm finalizing this video, I'm still waiting for some answers. There are people who can get me up there, so I am working on this. But I can't say today what will become of this idea. But I can say that if I get a yes, I will hit the road instantly. And I'm leaving a link to the official Volcano information site as usual and all active webcams that I know of. And uh, until my next trip to South Iceland, I will be working on some of the many videos I shot in my last trip. And uh, I do have the feeling that I might have to do another earthquake update soon. And it's not going to be about the Reykjanes Peninsula. It's just a tiny part of the bigger picture. And uh, only a few minutes before I sat down with this voiceover, we got yet another earthquake by the sealed volcano Skjaldbreiður on the plate boundaries. There have been quite many earthquakes there recently and I've been getting questions about it. And when this earthquake swarm started, the response from the experts was simple. Those earthquakes are tension changes and they have nothing to do with magma on the move. So they ruled it out completely. And if it is indeed magma, it shouldn't be a problem for them to detect it. This is the big brother of all sealed volcanoes in Iceland. Over 1000 meters high. And it was formed in a similar eruption that we see on the Reykjanes Peninsula now. And that eruption might go on for two more days or 200 years. That is how little we know about those things. 
and uh, just imagine how this landscape will look like after one year, two years or five years. And I'm very glad now that I got uh, so much uh, before footage, before the eruption came up. It will be extremely useful in my upcoming work. And with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, High Eastland.